God is good. All the time. <laughs> Jesus is good. Our Father, our brother, our Savior. Let's, let's have prayer. Let's invite Jesus to our meeting. Let's invite him to speak to his children. Father, forgive our sins. We have, we have looked at the wrong things. We have spoken the wrong things. Father, we humbly ask that you take away from us anything that would separate us from you. Make us clean. Take away the darkness. Take away the stain. Father, I need you now. I don't want your people to hear me speak. I don't want your people to hear my foolishness. I want your children to hear you, to hear words of salvation. We humbly invite you to come, come. We want to feel your presence. We want to feel your love. We want to experience your love. Come, we pray in the name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen. amen. praise God, praise God. Ah, uh, Raquel and, and Rachel. Now they were here and they heard, they suffered in Spanish. Rachel say no. <laughs> Welcome, sister. Uh, uh, Rachel, this is your family now. Okay? You're not alone anymore. This is your family. Okay? And you met your Spanish family earlier. Okay, so praise God. Praise God. Now, give me a moment because I want to share the screen with Um, Pastor, I'm sorry, you're muted right now. We can't hear you. Amen. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Now. Okay, Jehoshaphat. We're going to talk about Jehoshaphat today. And uh, I want us to see, because of the times that we're living in, because of the darkness and, and the confusion and, and, and the things that are going on, I want us to see how Jehoshaphat trusted in the Lord God. Okay. Uh, we know Jehoshaphat. Okay. We know he is the king of, he is the king of Judah. Amen? He's king of Judah. And at this time, uh, Israel had divided into two kingdoms. The northern kingdom was Israel. The southern kingdom was Judah. And, and let, me, let me read to you. Please follow me. Let me read to you uh, the prayer of Jehoshaphat. Okay. I, I want you to follow me as I read to you in Chronicles 20. Let's go to Chronicles 20, the prayer of Jehoshaphat. And I want you to notice a few things. Remember, there was a great army. There was a destruction. The enemy was coming against Jehoshaphat. And this is, this is his prayer. Okay? He stood in the house of God, and this is his prayer. Second uh, Chronicles 20, beginning in verse 5. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah in Jerusalem, in the house of the Lord uh, before the court. Uh, verse 6. And he said, now watch this now. And he said, O oh Lord God of our fathers, are not thou God in heaven? And rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in your hand 
Is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand thee? Now, I want you to notice, Moise, I want you to notice that Jehoshaphat is questioning God. But I guarantee you, Sue, I guarantee you that these questions are with reverence and with fear, a holy fear. Let's, let's keep reading. Uh, verse 7. Are thou, are not thou God, our God who did drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel and gave it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend forever? Verse 8, and they dwelt therein and, and have built thee a sanctuary therein for, for thy name, saying, if, if when evil comes upon us as a sword, a judgment, or a pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house, and in your presence, for your name is in this house, and cry unto you in our affliction." then you will hear and help. Amen? Uh, verse 10, And now, and behold, the children of, of Ammon and, and Moab and Seir, whom you would not allow Israel to invade when they came out of the, of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. And behold, or look, look, I say, how they reward us to come to come to cast us out of your possession that, that you have given us to inherit. Oh, our God. Oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no might against this great company, against this great army that comes against us. Neither know we what to do. But what? Our eyes are upon you. And I want to share this prayer with you because as, as we see, there was a great enemy coming against Jehoshaphat. There was a, a pestilence against Jehoshaphat. There was coming destruction against Jehoshaphat. And Jehoshaphat goes to the, to the house of God and he questions God. Are you not God? Are you not powerful? Are you not mighty? Are you not the creator? And you remember one fellow that came to Jesus and he said, all you have to do is say the word. You don't have to come to my home. You don't even have to touch my son. All you have to do is say the word and the sickness will go away. You remember? And we serve, we serve a mighty God. And we serve the creator of heaven and earth. And I want you to think about this. He only spoke, Eddie, he spoke and creation obeyed. Where there was nothing, now there was creation. Praise God. And, and by the way, this is the power that will take to resurrect his children. This is why, this is why we keep the Sabbath. Okay. This is why we're here today. What's the name of our church? Seventh Day Adventist. Adventist. I can tell you right now, I believe with all my heart, Jesus is coming. Okay. Jesus is coming. He's coming, and soon we're going home, and there will be made up, filled. There will be no more tears. And there will be no more pain and no more hurt because Jesus is coming. Amen? Praise God. Now, now, let me say to you, happy Sabbath. And happy Sabbath. It is good to be in the house of God. Okay? We are in the presence of God. I want you to think about this. We're in a place that is holy. We're in the presence of the Almighty God here. You can feel his love. You can fear how much he cares for you okay, in the shadow of, of, of God. Now, because there are too many liars, 
because there are too many false prophets, because there are too many false teachers, I want us to turn to Psalm 111. Okay? Don't trust the preacher. Don't trust that what he puts on the screen is true. Let's make sure that the preacher is not lying to you. Okay? If the pastor is lying to you, what are you going to do? Huh? What are you going to do? We're going to get rid of him right out the door. Amen? Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Okay. The works of his hands are, the works of his hands are verity and judgment. Get ready now. All his commandments are sure. They stand for a little while. They stand forever. And not only do they stand forever, they stand for ever and ever. Do we understand? If someone comes to you and says, look, the Sabbath was for a little while. Well, the commandments, the commandments forever. If someone says to you, well, the Sabbath, Jesus did away with. The word of God says that it's forever. Even the fourth commandment. Even the Sabbath. Praise God. Praise God. Let me tell you right now, the enemy wants to destroy your faith. The enemy wants to destroy you. The enemy, Eddie, wants to destroy your little boy. And this is why we must, and we're going to see in a moment, how Jehoshaphat held on to Jesus Christ. We must hold on to Jesus Christ. Let me, uh, let me read to you from, from one of the treasures, one of the treasures of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. This is why I read to you the prayer of Jehoshaphat. And I need you to listen carefully. I saw some with strong faith and agonizing cries pleading with God. Their countenance were pale and, and marked with deep anxiety, expressive of their internal struggle firmness and great earnestness was expressed in their countenance. Large drops, large drops of perspiration fell from their foreheads. Now and then their faces would light up with the mark of God's approbation. And again, the same solemn, earnest, anxious look would settle upon them. Evil angels crowded around them, pressing darkness upon them to, sh to shut out Jesus from their view, that their eyes might be drawn to the darkness that surrounded them. And thus they be led to distrust God and murmur against him. Their only safety, pay attention now, this is good. Their only safety was in keeping their eyes directed where? To Jesus. Amen? Angels of God had charged over his people. And as the poisonous atmosphere of evil angels pressed around these anxious ones, the heavenly angels were continually what? What did they do? What did they do? They waved. Okay? their wings over them to scatter the thick darkness. As the, prayer, as the praying ones continued their earnest cries, at times a ray of light from Jesus, at time a ray of light from Jesus, as the praying ones continued their earnest cries, at times a ray of light from Jesus would come to them to encourage their hearts and light up their countenance. Praise God. Praise God. I, I want us to understand. We find it in, in, in Daniel 12. A time of trouble is coming as such as never was. 
And there is a trouble coming, an awful trouble. This world is headed for an awful trouble. Now listen, everything that can be shaken will be shaken. You remember the fellow who built his house on the sand. What happened to him? What happened? The storm came. Rachel, the storm came and took away the house, destroyed everything he had. What happened with the fellow who built his house on the on the rock? It was firm. It stood. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Here's my question. Can you be shaken? Here's my question. How will you not be shaken? Trust in Jesus Christ. Don't look at the darkness as we read, as we read from, from the servant of the Lord. Don't look at the darkness. Look at the light. Who is the light? Jesus Christ. Keep, how, how's the song? How's the song? Turn your eyes upon Jesus. And brothers and sisters, listen, we're living in some terrible times. We're living in times when, when bad is good and your politicians defend bad. You know, oh, that's not really bad. Uh, that's okay or that's good. Bad is bad. We're living in a time that we must trust Jesus Christ. Okay? We must learn because we are weak. Moses, we are weak. And we tend to turn away from truth. And, and we tend to look at, at foolishness. We must learn to trust God. Okay? Tell me about this little fellow behind me. Okay? Does he trust the Father? Amen? Yes. It is time for us to learn to trust, to trust our father. Okay, you've heard the story of Asa. He was called a good king Asa. Okay, he, he did that which was right in the in the eyes of the Lord, as David his father. I'm gonna ask you a question now. What did God say about David? What did God say about David? David was a man after what? After what? After the heart of God. David was a man after the heart of God. Okay. Now, David committed certain crimes. David made certain mistakes, but he was a man after the heart of God. Okay. Now, if the Bible tells us, if Scripture tells us that Asa did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord, that is, he did as David, what is it saying about Asa? He was after what? The heart of God. Amen? Amen? Now, now Asa inherited his throne, Judah. He became king of Judah at a time when pagan idols and, and filthy images were coming into Judah, and the people were accepting the worship uh, as the other nations of these uh, uh, abominations. Now, can you imagine yourself? You're going to worship uh, something of a half bird, half man. A half calf, half man. These filthy things were coming in, into into Judah, and let me uh, let me say this, okay? Because the Bible says it. the people who worship idols and images become just as the idols that they worship. Okay, the idols that that they worship, the images that they worship. Listen, do not see. Do not hear, do not understand. What is it saying about the people? What is it saying? What is it saying? They worship idols, they become as the idols. They fall into darkness and are not able to understand the things that are going on around them. If not to the law and to the testimony, Isaiah chapter 8, they have no light. They have no light. Now, Let's think about this. Why do we have the sickness? Why do we have this pestilence, this plague, plague that's, that's destroying human life? 
Hmm? Leviticus 11 and 11, they shall be even an abomination to you. You shall not eat of their flesh. Even their carcass is an abomination. Why do we have this plague? Some people say, oh, no, no, they put it in a lab and, and, and they want to destroy. No. No. The wages of sin is death. It's that simple. The wages of sin is, is death. When a people do not follow God, when the Lord God says, don't eat that, and the people go ahead and eat it, it's going to destroy the population. We must look at Jesus. We must, we must walk, walk as Jesus walked. We must obey the word of God. Live a life of obedience. Now, if you ever want to know what the worship of Baal was, you need to take a look at Leviticus 18. It will give you, Leviticus 18 will give you the worship of Baal. What those people did in the name of their God. Uh, verse 3 of Leviticus 18, after the doings of the land of Egypt where you, where you lived, you will not do. Don't do as they did. Okay? Uh, uh, after the doings of the land of Canaan, where I'm bringing you, you shall not do. Do not walk in their ordinance. Do not walk in their, in their custom, their tradition. We must, we must walk with Jesus. Now, when Asa takes over, when Asa, good King Asa, when he takes over, he right away understands that he needs to clean, he needs to clean the kingdom. He needs to clean the land of idol worship. And he gives the order, destroy all the idols, destroy the images, destroy the filthy immorality that comes with idol worship. Mm -hmm. He commanded Judah to seek the Lord God, the Lord of their fathers, and, and he commanded Judah to what? Keep the law, keep the commandments of God. I want us to understand that those who keep, uh, Rachel, Rachel, and, and God bless you, sister. Those who keep the commandments of God, listen, they're going to enjoy the blessings of following the Lord God. Yes. Those who keep the commandments of God will, will enjoy the blessings of walking with Jesus. Jesus says, if you love me, what? Keep my commandments. Keep my commandments. I want us to remember. I want us to remember how Jesus said, how Jesus said, if you love mom and dad more than me, you're not worthy of me. If you love daughter, Son or daughter more than me, you're not worthy of me. Let's let's read Second Chronicles 15, verse 16. And I want you to look these up because maybe I'm not a liar, maybe I made a mistake and, and put up the wrong the wrong the wrong uh, scripture. And also concerning how do I say this? How do I say this? <laughs> Okay, much as good. Okay. But I want us to see how serious, Raquel, I want us to see how serious, uh, Phil, I want us to see how serious it is to follow Jesus Christ. It's not a game. Oh, I'm saved. I love Jesus. Ah, no, no, no. It's not a game. Okay. And, 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 Eddie, you have a, 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 you have your baby there in your arms, and your children must see how serious your relationship is with Jesus Christ. Amen? Okay, now watch this now. This is Asa, how he treats his mother. Okay, this is the woman who held him. So this is the woman who held the little baby at her breast. This is the woman who raised Asa and, and gave him all the love that she had. Okay. Also concerning Maka, okay, Maka'a, the mother of Asa, the king, he removed her from being queen because she had made an idol in the grove and Asa cut down her idol and stomped it and burnt it in the brook of Kidron. Now he didn't grab her, please understand. 
Okay, Asa followed God. Asa know that knows that that the commandment number five is is what honor mom and dad. Okay, and then you're going to have long life. You know, love mom as she grows older. You take care of mom. Love your dad as he grows older. You take care of dad. Okay, you're never going to be as good as your dad. Do you understand that? Do you understand that? The child will never be as good as his father or his mother. Why? Because the commandment says, honor mother and father. Uh, I hope we understand. I hope we understand. But, but it was not with force. It was not with disrespect. But you can see Asa coming to his mother, and he says, and he says mother, you can't be queen anymore. And mother, because you worship this idol, this filthy image, I cannot allow you to, to be queen. And he brings his mother away from, from being queen. And he takes, and this is an example for those who live in the last days, who love Jesus Christ, who, who have the faith of Jesus, he takes the idol and he destroys it. Amen? Amen? Uh, the disciples were, were in, in jail, in prison, and, and some things were going on. And the, the fellow in charge of, of the prisoners, he says, to, he says to the disciple, he says, what must I do to be saved? And he says, believe Jesus Christ, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you and all your children will be saved. But we need to understand. We need to understand. Uh, Moise, the Lord God is telling us, Believe Jesus. Okay. What did Jesus say? The man shall live by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Every word. Every word. Believe what Jesus says. And when your children see that you do follow God, listen, they will be saved. They will be saved. So Asa takes his mother right off the throne. You cannot be mom, mom, <laughs> mom. You can't be queen anymore. Because the people need to see that we love Jehovah, that we love the creator of heaven and earth more than we love our very own lives. And, and listen, Judah, Judah was blessed. And Judah was blessed. And finally, with time, good King Asa, as he, as he gets older, he becomes sick. And he understands. He knows his condition. He knows that soon he will sleep with his fathers. And, and he makes Jehoshaphat, his son, he makes him king. I want you to remember now. I want you to remember that Asa had taught his children okay, the difference between right and wrong. Asa had taught his children the difference between the holy and the common. Amen. Amen. So he gives the throne to Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat walked in the ways of his father David. Remember? Remember? David was a man after the heart of God. Remember? So this must mean that Jehoshaphat okay, was a man after the heart of God. And just Jehoshaphat did not search for Balaam, the ways of Balaam. You remember what Balaam did. We spoke about this. Remember, Sue? Balaam taught the children of God to commit adultery. That Balaam taught the children of God to worship, to worship Baal Peor, demons. And this was the only way that he could curse God's children. He said, oh, well, send and send your daughters into the camp and your daughters are going to teach them evil. Your daughters are going to teach them to worship uh, the, the devils. And in this way, the Lord God will not, will not help them anymore. Not Jehoshaphat. And the Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he walked in the first ways of his father David and he did not do the evil of faith. Okay, Second Chronicles uh, 19.11. Listen. I'm going to dare to say to you 
that Jehoshaphat was a man ahead of his time. Okay. Moise, watch this now, brother. Jehoshaphat was a man ahead of his time. You remember how the United States of America started? You remember? And what, 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 there's an amendment there in the Constitution that says that government will not, will not set up a religion. Uh, 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 Rachel, the United States of America began as, as, as a place where the church was separated from the government. Look at, what, look at what Jehoshaphat did. A man way ahead of his times. Look at this. And behold, look. Okay, uh, Second Chronicles 19.11. Look, Amariah, Amariah, the chief priest, is over you in all matters of the Lord. Okay. And Amariah the priest is going to govern you. He's going to teach you okay, religion. Amen. Religion. Okay. Zebediah, the son of Ishmael, the ruler of the house of Judah, he's going to teach you what? In the king's matter. Do we understand? Amariah the priest will be in charge of the church, Zebediah, the government. Praise God. Praise God. Jehoshaphat, a man ahead of his time. Okay. Now, I, I don't know if you read, but, but someone said, that someone said sometime, Lord God, your commandments have made me wiser than my teachers. Amen. Amen. Listen, we're living in awful times. We're living in awful times. And we're living in times of lawlessness, just as the Bible says. You know, we're living in times when it's popular, it's popular to throw bricks at, at police officers. And we're living in times when even certain pastors want to, want to march and protest. No. And I told you last, last Sabbath, I told you, and, and please understand you on, on YouTube and, and Facebook, I, I told you that there is only one movement that you need to join. Okay? One movement that you need to join. The Seventh-day Adventist movement. Because, Phil, the Seventh-day Adventist movement is the movement that's going to bring in justice and righteousness and it's going to bring in Jesus Christ because we're going home soon. We're going home soon. Amen. And he, he walked in the commandments of God, not after the doings of Israel. Do we understand? Israel, Israel, this was at the same time that King Ahab married Jezebel and he had taught, we're going to see this in a moment, he taught Israel immorality and bloodshed and, and foolishness, and they worshiped Baal. If you remember, uh, Elijah came to Israel, and he stood in front of Ahab. Eddie, he stood in front of Ahab, and he said, you're going to have three and a half years of drought. And for three and a half years, their cattle was dying because there was no food. Their crops failed. And it seemed like they were cursed. Even, now Rachel, even when they called to Baal and, 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 and Asherah, and they called to these gods, they were not blessed. At the same time, at the same time, Judah, led by Jehoshaphat, prospered. And what was the difference? What was the difference? One kingdom followed the world, while the other kingdom followed, walked in the commandments of God. And if you look, if you search your Bible carefully, I don't have it for you, but if you search your Bible carefully, the Lord God will tell you that those who keep the commandments of God are going to receive the blessings. You're going to have your reign. You're going to have your cattle will prosper. You will, you will enjoy the blessing when we follow Jesus Christ. Okay. 
Take a look at this now. Jehoshaphat, he picks out the teachers as uh, an army of men, and he sends them out. He sends them out to give Bible studies. Okay, these these men they taught in Judah, and they had what did they teach? They had the book of the law. They had it with them, and they went about through all the cities of Judah, and they taught the people. They went out to give Bible studies. Okay, very important today, in, in the time of the plague, you, uh, children of God, you, the church of God, you must go out and give Bible studies. You must go out and share the gospel. Uh, last night with, with our Spanish lesson, we found out that, that one fella took one talent and he hid it. Moises, Eddie, he hid the talent in the ground. He, he made a hole. He made a hole in the dirt. And he hid the talent, and he, and he covered it, and he waited for the master to come. And when the master came, he took that one talent, he dug it out, he took it to the master, and he said, hey, Look, master, I, I, I know how you are, master. I know that you're a hard man. So I took the talent and hid it. Did he know his master? He did not know his master. Why did he not know his master? Because he took the talent, he took salvation, and he hid it in the dirt. His answer to the master should have been, Master, I know how much you love me. I know how much you love your creation. So I took salvation and I gave it to, to, to many others. But because he was afraid to go, he was confused, did not know his master. They, uh, they taught in Judah. They had the book of the law. They went and taught the book of the law. They went and taught scripture. And they went through all the cities of Judah, and they taught the people. Okay? Bible studies. Bible studies. I am here today because one, one, one person, came to my house. And even though I would turn on the TV, Friday night after sundown, I would turn on the TV, even though I would make fun of her and her church, she was there every Friday night to give me, to give my wife, Bible study. Help me here, help me here, because I get confused, okay? Who has the best laugh? Who has the best laugh? Who has the best laugh? See, now I'm confused. Phil, who has the best laugh? The one who laughs last. Okay. Okay. I was laughing when we began the, the Bible studies. Guess who's laughing now? I remember that she told me one day, she said, and, and I thought, this woman's crazy. She don't even know me. She said, you're going to be a great preacher. She said that. I'm not saying that I'm a great preacher. I'm not. But, but she said that. And I, I just, you know, I, I, I thought, this poor woman, she doesn't know who she's talking to. And when my wife met me, I was on a Harley Davidson, and my hair was as long as her hair is now. Okay? And she'll tell you she was afraid of me. I would chase her down. She'd see me coming, so she would go out the other exit. And, 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 and Jeff, she would see me coming, and she would, you know, search for another exit. And guess who was there at the other exit? But boy, hell, yeah, yeah. I, I you know, sometimes, uh, I'm not going to say this. I was going to say sometimes it pays to lie, but I can't say it. Okay. But anyway, praise God. This woman... She stood, she stood firm in the word of God. And finally, I, I was telling, I was telling Rachel, I was telling her, finally, in the middle of our Bible study, I grabbed the pastor and I said, look, man, I want to be baptized now. Praise God. Because God is powerful. 
because he is the creator of heaven and earth. Amen? Praise God. And now we do have the Seventh-day Adventist at Belize. I don't know, Rachel, if you've ever seen these. Okay? Uh, one day... Uh, Ashley, one day, will put that. Okay? Now, I don't, don't think for one minute that I've forgotten the name. I was just testing you. Okay? okay? So, yes, we do have... We do have, and they're called 28 Fundamental Beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Okay. Uh, what do we believe about the Holy Scripture? Okay. It is a written word of God. Okay. It, is, it is in this book, in this book here, here you will find, Ashley, you will find everything you need to know for salvation. Yes. Yes, there's no need to go outside this book. Jesus Christ said, Jesus Christ said, if you, if you want eternal life, read your scripture. You search the scripture because you believe that in them you, you have eternal life. And yes, you do. And the scriptures are they that what? Testify of, of, of me, of Jesus. Amen. The standard of character we find in the Bible. Uh, the Trinity. I mean, at one time, three fellas come in here to convince me that the Trinity was something that we made up and it didn't exist, blah, blah, blah. We spoke for hours in the back till my wife got rid of them. Praise God. Okay. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God, three co-eternal persons, one God, do we understand? Amen? Amen. Now, I mean, uh, Richard, do you have the book? Do you have the book? Hold it up. Hold it up. You don't have it? Um, that one? No. Are you sure? It's that one right there. Yeah. It's that one. It's just a different, a, a different okay? Guess, guess what the first thing that Raquel did when she come to church? Huh? She said, she said, preacher, you wouldn't happen to have a fair de Jesus somewhere. <laughs> Yes, sister, I do. Praise God. We have incredible Bible studies. And they're not, Moisey, they're not expensive at all. Incredible Bible studies that we can share with people. Okay. The Fe de Jesus, which is what brought me to, to Jesus Christ, the study that they gave me. We even have it in English. Phil, you know what English is? Yeah, praise God. Praise God. Uh, uh, sister, you told me that you had the uh, amazing facts, Bible studies. Amen. These are incredible Bible studies. Incredible Bible studies that we can share, that we must share with those who, who do not understand, with those who do not know. Okay? Uh, if the teaching of God's word, listen to this, and think about the times we live in. Okay? Think about the things that you see on your TV, on the news. Now think about the things you hear your politicians say. Okay? If the teaching of God's word were made the controlling influence in the life of every man and woman, what? What? In the heart, in the mind and heart, were brought under its power, what? The evil that now exists? We find no place in our society. If the teaching of God's word were made the controlling influence in, in the life of every man and woman, listen, there would be no COVID-19. No. No. If the teachings of God's word were made the controlling influence in the life of every man and, and, and woman, there would be no evolution. No. Do you understand? I can't imagine how a Christian could say, yes, I believe in evolution. Ridiculous. The Lord God made everything that we see, even the things that we don't see, in six days, and he rested on the seventh. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And wait a minute. I said that wrong. Let me try again. The Lord God made everything that you see, even, even the things that you don't see, in six days, and he made one more day. Amen? After day number six, he made one more day. Because a week 
could have been, should have been, uh, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, help me, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, no, I'm sorry, Sunday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, see, I get a little confused every now and then, uh, I am an old man, it's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, but he made one more day, amen? What day did he make? What day did he make? He made, listen to this, he made, the day that he made is the Lord's day. Because he says it himself. He said, the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Praise God. I, I need to read this again, because this is good. I need to read this again. If the teaching of God's word were made the controlling influence in the life of every man and woman, if the mind and heart were brought under its power, the evils that now exist wouldn't be. Amen? Praise God. Praise God. The fear of the Lord fell upon, Second Chronicles 17, verse 10, the, the fear of the Lord fell upon all the kingdoms that surrounded Jehoshaphat. And no one dared to make war against Jehoshaphat. And right away, when he began his reign, he began to build walls and, and, to, and to strengthen his armies and weapons. But because he walked in the commandments of God, Eddie, because he walked in the commandments of God, because he gave his heart to Jesus Christ, because he loved the Lord Jesus with all his heart, with all his mind, with all his strength, with all his life, the enemy was afraid of him, and his kingdom prospered while Israel was suffering. The Philistines, they brought to, to Jehoshaphat presents. They brought him silver. The, the, the Arabians brought him flocks and, and herds and, and, and animals. And Judah prospered. They prospered. Because God's children need to keep their eyes on Jesus Christ. Amen, preacher. Amen, Amen preacher. Amen. Amen, preacher. Now, let me tell you about Ahab. At the time that Jehoshaphat and, and Judah prospered, we know about Je Ahab. Ahab married Jezebel. Ahab was the king of Israel. Ahab, I want you to listen to this. I want you to pay attention. Pay attention. Ahab worshipped Baal, and he would take the babies and put him in the burning arms of the statue, an iron statue, a filthy, a filthy image, and, and, and put the babies in, in the hands, in the so the red, hot, burning hands of that statue. The, the people of Israel would, would, would sway and chant. I don't know if you've ever seen these modern, these, these modern uh, Christian music that they chant. They chant. It's witchcraft. That's witchcraft making its way into, actually making its way into the church of Christ. And because of the power of music, sometimes we allow ourselves to be deceived. As Ahab took the baby, the king of Israel took the baby, the people of Israel began to chant and, 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 and sway back and forth. They would go into an ecstasy. A trance. And you could hear the drums as they, as they bang the drums. Boom, boom, boom. And as, as the filthy, filthy King Ahab, a traitor to God and his own people, as he took the child, the small child, 
and he put it near the hands, the burning hands of that iron statue, and the child began to cry. The people would chant a higher pitch so that you could not hear the child crying. The mother would scream, my baby, as the guards held the mother and, and, and the drums, and the drums beat faster and louder to drown out the, the cries of the suffering thing. Why? Why, what for was that baby sacrificed? Why? Help me to understand this. And so why did these people sacrifice the babies? What did they ask for? What did the people ask for as they burned these children, as they, as they took the life of these children? They asked for prosperity. They asked for their crops to increase. They ask for blessings in their lives. I mean, we're suffering. Uh, we're suffering. You're all sitting there wearing a mask because we must wear a mask because we're suffering from a plague. Is it time for the Seventh day Adventist people to ask themselves are we doing something wrong that there's a plague? Lord God, my Lord Jesus, what are we doing wrong that there's a plague? In the United States of America, the nation that I love, the nation that opened her arms to take me and my family out of communism and give us the blessing of, of if you've never been outside the United States of America, listen, listen, we have blessings here that you cannot imagine. Okay. We have air condition while other people in other lands have dirt floors. We have stucco walls and beautiful brick on, and stone on the outside. We have stone on our sink, the vanities. While people in other countries live in grass, in grass huts. But could it be that the plague is here? Because, listen, over 600,000 abortions a year in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. Could it be that we officially, officially, we support same-sex marriage? We support immorality and perversion. Is that why, Phil, is that why we suffer this plague? And we need to think about these things. If you ask, and, and I've read this, if you ask these women who have had abortions, Hollywood women, I, I saw a whole article on this, and most of the answer was, I didn't want to change my life. The baby was going to change my lifestyle. I wanted to, I wanted to continue my career. And, and the favorite one is, and the favorite one is, well, if I'm raped, if I'm raped, I'm not raped, if I'm raped, I don't want a baby from a rapist. Is it the baby's fault that the father is a low life servant of hell? We make all kinds of excuses to turn away from truth. We make all kinds of excuses to follow Baal. There was none, uh, 1 Kings 21, 25, there was none like unto Ahab, which he sold himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. So at the time that, that, that Jehoshaphat in in Judah experienced and enjoyed the, 
the blessings, Raquel, the blessings of following God, Ahab and Israel were suffering because they would not follow God because they followed and, and worshiped demons. And by the way, let me share this with you. Please understand what I'm about to say. Any religion that is not Christ-centered, any religion that does not follow Christ, any religion where Christ is not your Savior, listen, is devil worship. It's devil worship. I hope you understand that. I hope you understand that. Now, in Jehoshaphat, he made a mistake or two in his lifetime. One of them was to take Eddie. He took, he took his son and married his son to the daughter, Atalia, to the daughter, okay, to the daughter of, of Ahab and Jezebel. And that brought some trouble. We'll, we'll read about that. We'll study that in, in, a, in the near future. Okay. But uh, he married his son, Jehoshaphat married his son to the daughter of Ahab, the daughter of, of, of Jezebel, and he thought that that would make them stronger. That would form, now in Spanish, I tore this word up. I completely destroyed this word when I did it in Spanish. Okay. Alliance. It sounds better in English. It came out a whole lot better. Raquel and, 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 and Rachel had walked in and they saw everybody trying to cor correct the preacher in one word. What did you think? You thought, oh man, this guy can't even talk, right? But no, thank you, sister, because Rachel right away said, I know how you feel, Pastor. I know exactly because I have the same trouble. Praise God. Praise God. But, but Jehoshaphat takes his son, marries his son to Israel, okay, and now they have an alliance. Now Jehoshaphat thinks, oh, well, now we're stronger. Now, Phil, now we, could, now we can destroy our enemies. And then Ahab says to Jehoshaphat, I want you to join me. We're going to go to war. I want you to join me. And, and without thinking, Jehoshaphat says yes. And then a moment later, he has that, that, you know, that small voice that speaks to you, spoke to him, and he turns to the king Ahab, the king of Israel, and he says, don't you have a prophet of Jehovah here? Let's see what the prophet says. And, and Eddie, Ahab brought in, listen to this, 400 prophets of Baal. And every one of them said, yes, yes, go to war. You're going to win. Go to war. All right, go to war. And, and, and Jehoshaphat thought about it for a moment. And he says, wait a minute. Don't you have a prophet of God? A prophet of Jehovah? Don't you have a follower of Christ here? Yeah, I've got one, but I don't really like him because he never, he never agrees with me. He never says anything nice about me. Well, let's hear. And they bring this man in, poor guy. They bring this man in, and this is what he says. I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills. Who's the king of Israel? Who's the king of Israel? Not Jehoshaphat. Who's the king of Israel? Ahab. I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. Uh-oh. And the Lord said, these have no master. Uh-oh. Let them return every man to his house in peace. And of course, Ahab gets up and he throws his hand in the air and he hollers at his guards and put this man in prison get rid of him. Now Ahab... Well, he thought he was a smart fellow. They go to war. They go to war, and he does not dress in his, in, in his uh, what do I call it, kingly armor and robe. He dresses as one of the common warriors, and they go to war. Okay, they go to war. Jehoshaphat is in the other chariot just right near him. Jehoshaphat is decked out. He's, he's wearing his, uh, what do I call it, his robe, his armor. You know, he stands out. As the men are fighting, and Ahab is watching. Now, he looks like a common soldier. 
the enemy, the enemy has given the order, never mind these, I want you to go after the king. They come after Jehoshaphat. But Ahab is dressed in his common clothes, and somebody, somebody right in the middle of the battle, we don't know who, we don't know which soldier, we don't even know whose side he was on, he takes his bow, he takes his arrow, and he shoots an arrow up in the air, he doesn't even aim. And if we can look at the arrow, we're going to see it go. Where did it land? Where did it land? It landed in the chest of Ahab. And that day, Ahab died. Jehoshaphat says to his driver, get me out of here. We're going home. And the men of Israel, without a king, without a shepherd, return everyone to their own house. They dropped their weapons, they dropped their, their shields, and at Iselia, they ran home, just as the men of God had said. Now Ahab died that day. Jehoshaphat and, and Judah, they had peace for a certain amount of time. And then comes a messenger to Jehoshaphat. Years go by, years of peace. I, I don't want you to think it happened right away. Years of peace, 20 years of peace go by. And suddenly a messenger shows up. And he says to Jehoshaphat, he says to Jehoshaphat, the, the children of Moab, the children of Ammon, the, the, the Amorites and, and others, and, and there's an army from across the sea and they're coming to destroy you, O king. Jehoshaphat now trembles. I want you to see, remember, we're living in the days when the enemy wants to destroy the, the church of God. Everything going on about you, uh, the immorality, the, the Hollywood, the violence, everything you see around you, listen, don't, don't believe for one minute that it's just things that take place. It is all a plan to destroy your faith, to destroy the church of God. And this is what the enemy was coming. Notice the enemy did not go after, uh, after Israel. The enemy was coming after Jehoshaphat, the one who trusted in God. Jehoshaphat feared. Jehoshaphat feared. What did he do? What did he do? Amen. Amen. When darkness was coming over Jehoshaphat, when he was afraid, uh, help me here. If, if, if my people who are called by my name, if my people who are called by my name, if, if, if they humble themselves, if, if they make prayer, if they seek the face of God, what? I will heal their land. Jehoshaphat, he feared, he, he humbled himself. He, he searched for the Lord God. He declared a fast. Very important now what we're about to see. If you wanted on that day to find Jehoshaphat, you were going to find him on his knees praying. Mm -hmm. You were going to find him on his knees and searching for God. This is why we read earlier the, 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 the prayer of Jehoshaphat. And notice, and notice, please understand, please understand, you who love Jesus Christ, okay, the prayer of Jehoshaphat, public prayer, according to the servant of the Lord, should not be a long, prepared prayer. Mm -mm. Public prayer must be clear, short, to the point. Amen? These prayers were, oh, Lord, and you, and I, and 20 minutes later, they're still praying. This is not to worship. This is not to worship the Lord God. This comes, this comes from the enemy. Uh, you have no idea how long or how short my attention is. 
especially if you're on your knees and your body hurts. Now prayer at home, you alone in your closet, oh, you spend all night in prayer. Take, take with you a long list, put my name on your list. And you can pray an hour, you can pray two hours, you can pray seven hours when you're alone with Jesus Christ. But public prayer needs to be sure. It must be for the good of your own brethren, for the health of your brethren. I don't know if you heard this, but the Lord God knows everything you need before you ever ask. Amen. Please don't write out your prayers. Don't write out your prayers. Oh, it's my turn to pray tomorrow, so I'm going to spend all night writing out a paragraph, a letter, to repeat. No, no, no. Now, you can write out your prayers. You can keep a prayer journal. Amen? I've done that. I've done that. A year later, I go back and I see, wow, look at that prayer. He answered. The Lord God put my boys through, through, through college. The Lord God put my boys through college. He opened the door. And today they're both pastors. That's an answer to prayer. God will bless when we trust him. I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you that from experience. Lord God, I don't have the army to take on these people. Uh, Father, you're the Lord God. I'm, we're going to be destroyed if you don't do anything. All Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. They're little ones. They're little ones. Eddie, Moisey, and, and congratulations the way you taught Michael. We must teach our little ones to pray. Don't you dare get on your knees and pray while your little ones are running around. Don't do that. That's an insult to God. Make your prayers as short. Take your little one, put him on your knees with you. Put his little hands together and teach them. Yes. Don't you dare come to church and, and sit while your teenager is running around. No. He needs to sit with you. I'm telling you from experience. Because the most precious thing that you have is your little one. Teach your little one to come to Jesus. Teach your little one to, to play with Jesus. Teach your little one to speak with Jesus. Teach your little one to hear from Jesus. Listen. And my sons are full grown now. I tell everybody, oh, they can lift a house. Eh, I might be exaggerating a little bit. But I don't want my children suffering what I have suffered. Amen? I have suffered because of my foolishness. I don't want them suffering what I have suffered. Teach them the love of Jesus Christ. Now take a look how God answers the prayer of Jehoshaphat. Watch what he says. Watch what he says. Do not be afraid, he says. Don't be afraid of this multitude. Don't be afraid of this army that's coming against you. The battle is not yours. The battle is 
Amen. The battle belongs to God. You do not need to fight in this battle, Jesus says. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. O oh, Judah, Jerusalem, fear not. Do not be dismayed. Tomorrow you go out against them, and the Lord will be with you. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets. Who's his message for? Who's his message for? Amen. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. Think about what Jehoshaphat saw as he looked out his balcony. He saw a sea. He saw a sea of warriors. As far as the eye could see. A people from across the ocean. A, a people from his left. A people from his right. Every one of them with murder in their heart. Not one of those men. They came because they were looking for Christ. I want you to think about this. I, I should have said this when I first started. I can't even remember if I said it. That everything that's written in the Bible. What? Is an example for those who live in the last days. Amen? That's what Jesus says. Amen. Well, as, Jehoshaphat, Amen. As, Jehoshaphat, as Jehoshaphat looks and he, and he sees this army, can you imagine his heart? Was there a panic? Oh, my Lord God. Please take care of this, because I can't. Now, I want you, and if you're a pastor listening, I want you to understand this. I mean, today we have pastors who believe they're okay. They stay home with, 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 with the wife, and, and they use Zoom, and, 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 you know. But that's not what Jehoshaphat did. Think about this. Jehoshaphat put the ministers, he put the pastors on the front line. Jehoshaphat put the church leaders in front of the army. Pastor, pastor. See, it is the pastor who has to go out there, whether there's COVID or no COVID. It is the minister of God. Listen to the listen to the title. Minister of God. What does that mean? He serves God. It is the minister of God who has to go out there. COVID or no COVID. Jehoshaphat, here comes the greatest army that he has ever seen. You can't even count that. They come with bloodlust. They come to take the babies and smash them into the stone. They come to pull the heart of their prisoner and offer it to the sun. They come to destroy your women and your families and the faith of Judah. And Jehoshaphat takes the pastor and the minister, the, the Levites, the priest, and he puts them in front of the in front of the army, and they march toward the enemy. And these men, as they march toward the enemy, they praise God. They sing hymns. What did they sing? You ever wonder? Huh? Raquel, you can't say that because Raquel 
read it this morning. Rachel, you guys read it this morning. So you can't tell them what these people were, what these ministers were saying, were singing. Let's turn to Psalms 119. I'm sorry, 117. Thank you. 117. Psalms 117. Where do I find that? Is that pretty near the middle of the Bible? Somebody help me. Psalms 117, Psalm 117. Somebody read that for me. Somebody read that for me. One more verse, sister. Amen. Praise the Lord, they were singing. Can somebody read the first two verses of 118? Help me now. Oh, give thanks. Amen. So I want you to read it like this. Okay? You have no fear because we're family here. Amen? The preacher cannot embarrass you because we're family here. Amen? Okay? Read it like this. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good because his mercy endures forever. Let me hear you, Sue. Amen. Amen. These men, they're walking toward the enemy. They're walking toward death. And they're crying out, God is merciful. His mercy is forever. They're crying out. They sing. And what happened? What took place? What took place? As they were singing, Phil, as they were singing, these warriors, these men of death, these men were murdering their hearts. Uh, Rachel, Rachel, they bumped into one another and they took out their weapons and they turned on one another and destroyed, and destroyed their own army. They turned to slay one another. And when God's children, when they came to the battlefield, they found that not one was left alive. Listen, the day is coming soon. The day is coming soon. When the enemy of God will run and, and call for the rocks to fall on them and hide them. From the wrath of the Lamb. Okay. We must trust Christ. As Jehoshaphat did. Because soon Sunday law is coming. We must trust the Lord God. Because soon we will not be allowed to buy and sell. A great multitude will come. To destroy the church of God. To destroy your faith. We must trust God. The whole world will unite against those who keep the Sabbath. We must trust Jesus Christ. Christ is coming soon. Christ is coming soon. And here's the question. Who are you? You, who are you? You there on Zoom, who are you? Are you one of those who follow the Lamb wherever he goes? Amen, preacher. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. Listen, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Okay. The Lord God has chosen you 
The Lord God has pulled you out of the darkness to be that special people. Rachel, to be that special people. To be a special treasure. He's pulled you out of darkness. He's pulled you out of darkness to be a holy people, to give glory to Jesus Christ. If you turn to, you don't have to now, but if you turn to Revelation 14, he has called you to give the everlasting gospel because we're going home soon. Amen. Let's, let's have prayer. And then please, let's take our, uh, my wife has put a, uh, Lysol and cleaning things back then if you could wipe down around you where you have sat and then we'll take care of the rest on another day. But let's have prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that we can take your word, handle your word, read your word, touch your word, hear your word. And we humbly ask of your grace that we can keep your word. As my brothers and sisters, as they drive home, I humbly ask that you go with them. I I humbly ask that your presence is in each home and your blessings and your peace. And Father, give us of your grace that we do not look at the darkness, but that we look at Jesus. Oh God, let us look at Jesus our hope, our medicine, our prescription, our dear Savior. We humbly ask that we never forget the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. We pray in the name of Jesus always. Amen. Praise God. Praise God.